I think your personal story, Jerry, is actually a feather in your cap for helping, you know, kids that come in to talk to you about work and they're like, man, I don't know if I want to do this. I don't know about this, but I think your personal story is a testament. Hi, this is Ted Kelly with another Ted's Hospitality Minute. Hey, today our awesome guest is Jerry Reed. He is the Area Bikes President of Highgate hospitality he has got to come on and talk a little bit about highgate what's going on over there and the operations side of things which is under his area of responsibility obviously we're looking forward to hearing all the great things that jerry's going to share with us hey jerry how are you great great thank you for having me ted hey man thanks for giving me a few minutes in, of your time i know you're a busy guy but as as usual before we dive into some of the things that you guys have going on over at Highgate, I always like to give our audience an opportunity to learn a little bit about you, the person, and kind of what got you in the hospitality area. Can you talk a little bit about that for a few minutes? Yes, of course. Uh, happy to. Look, I, I uh, have you know had the great privilege of, of working in hospitality for you know over 25 years. It feels like uh, it well, has been most of my life, and. Um, I had uh, the opportunity to start in this industry as a server um, and um, really then decided that this is where I needed to be. This is where I wanted to build my career. Um, I do have a, an identical twin brother and he was already in hospitality as a bellman at the time. So he gave me a window or his his job and viewing from the outside uh, in gave me the opportunity to really learn through him that this is something that I might have an appetite to do. Um, and then, uh, obviously transitioned through some growth on the food and beverage area or in the food and beverage space before transitioning over to the rooms side of the operation and learning and growing there. And then, uh, transitioning into, uh, multiple leadership roles from director of front office to director of housekeeping, director of rooms, then director of operations. And then, uh, uh, the good fortune of, of, of becoming a general manager uh, and managing my own hotel um, before transitioning within Highgate to uh, become an area managing director and now uh, an area vice president of operations. Uh, so had the, the great opportunity to start from the, the, the line level and learn and grow and develop a profound appreciation for everything that our hospitality professionals do on a daily basis to ensure that uh, we're providing a high level of service not only to our external guests, but to each other, to our internal guests. Uh, so uh, that's that's kind of the most exciting part of my role to me is is really being able to engage with with people, um, and that applies to really both the uh, the internal with the, our, our our coworkers, our team members, our peers, and also the guests that we have the uh, the opportunity to serve. Uh, so for me, every day uh, is 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 a journey, but it also feels fresh and new and I can't imagine working in any other space uh, that would provide me that same opportunity to to do that. Uh, so I'm 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 fortunate. I'm grateful um, uh, for uh, the opportunities that this industry has has provided me, and you know, um, and allowed me to enjoy what I do on a daily basis. Man, that is awesome. So so talk a little bit about kind of. I think you kind of gave us the highlight, but a day in the life for you is like what you probably start early in the morning you've got you know a couple things you got to check off on the first thing in the morning you you're obviously probably looking for oh what where, where, where the uh where the you know the big accident that where <laughs> look i'll tell you that, that my role is is i mean i'm sure there's a lot like mine but mine is unique i believe in the sense that i still i still sit at a property i still have the opportunity to to own and to manage a property on a daily basis. So for me, it's exactly what you mentioned. I mean, I start my day just by walking around, engaging with the team and saying hello to everybody, just making small talk. And uh, at the same time, I'm, I'm looking, I'm, I'm observing and I'm looking for anything that is uh, an opportunity area. And the reality is, is that in, in our space as leaders, you know, it's unlikely that, that although I have an open door policy and people do come in, um, it's unlikely that they'll give me and uh, the small stuff, right? It's unlikely that they'll tell me that um, this well in the uh, in the kitchen on the line is not working. It's unlikely that they'll come to my office 
to tell me that because they view it as small stuff. But um, it, in fact, it, it affects their productivity. It affects their lives. It affects how many steps they have to take. So I want to fix it. So part of why I, I roam the hotel and engage with the team and go to their space is that they're going to be more likely to share with me the small stuff. And my view is if we take care of the small stuff, then hopefully that'll avoid big stuff. Um, so so I, that's how I start my day, engaging with the team, of course, then engaging with leadership and um, understanding what they need from me and being able to hopefully provide that. You know, I think that my role is just to facilitate and making sure that everybody that I support has everything that they need to be successful on a daily basis. So, so that's my approach, uh, you know, as I navigate my day. And of course, there's fires to put out uh, throughout the day, and we navigate that as well. But again, we, we take care of those small fires and we avoid the big ones. Right, right, right. Of course. So, so tell me something. So, what's the biggest challenge you are facing right now at your hotel? You know, everybody you know, got either a labor issue or something like that. What What's your biggest challenge that you face on a day-to-day basis? Here? You know, I have to say that the challenge in general is getting back to, uh, to normal. To, and, and honestly, it's what, the, what's that new normal um, in terms of service, execution, consistency. Uh, I'll tell you that this property uh, that, that I sit at when I was, I was general manager at this property uh, post, pandemic, uh, you know, we had the opportunity almost immediately un- through an unfortunate circumstance through a storm, we had the opportunity to sell the hotel out. And uh, this is a 462 room property. And we had uh, a sellout uh, with all of about 20 employees that worked at the hotel at the time. Uh, a hotel that typically would have 250 employees, we had 20. And we, we were sold out and the team executed at a high level. The team executed. And I was so, so proud of, of the level of service that they, that, they, that they gave. And of course, I never want them to have to do that again because everybody was running and, and taking care of it. But the pride that they took in everything that they did was um, just, you, you, can't, you, you can't recreate it. And you know, as we grow, as we add on employees, as we bring on, bring people into the fold, um, it's hard to maintain that level of execution um, as you probably have more opportunity to see things slip through the cracks. Uh, so while I say it's a challenge, it's really, it really boils down to culture, the culture that you build, um, the, 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 the ensuring that everybody is invested in the success of the property. So while we are now back at not 250, 220, we're back maybe at 120 uh, employees here. Uh, those 120 are executing as if they were 200 plus, right? So while it's it's hard, um, it can be accomplished, it can be done, and it's done through just a, 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 back to what I said earlier, ensuring that we facilitate as leaders, making sure that they have everything they need to execute and making sure that that we eliminate all of those barriers that they have that make their job more difficult. And in turn, they will appreciate that and execute at a higher level. Um, and it's as simple as just really caring for your team and making sure that you remove any barriers that they have. Um, but again, I say that in that labor is still an opportunity, but we can accomplish more uh, just by being that much more efficient and making sure that those that are here are 100% invested, just as as we had the 20 that we're executing at a high level. Yeah, yeah. Do you find that it's, it's hard to find employees right now, or do you find that it's just finding the right kind of employee? You know, I think that uh, it, the interview process, what, what's happened is that we have seen an uptick. We have seen uh, the, kind of an increase in the flow of applicants, which is great. Um, now, talent is different. Uh, right. That there's there's not the experienced. Um, uh, let's say that the, the hospitality professional that's been doing this 20 years uh, is is probably not who we're finding walk through the door. It's someone who hasn't worked in hospitality at all. And uh, I think that we have to be open to preparing them, to molding them, to training them, to guiding them and hopefully finding individuals who may not know that there's a path in building a career in this industry 
and helping them tap into that. So, you know, that's also a mission, uh, you know, that I have is to hopefully help others grow. And um, sometimes it's in within these four walls. Sometimes it's outside these four walls. They may only be with us for a season, but hopefully we impart on them something that they can carry forward with them no matter what they do. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, I do think that that we, we are seeing that flow of applicants and it's just really us uh, providing them the opportunity to interview us just as we're interviewing them to make sure it's a good fit because that really is, uh, there's not, this isn't for everyone. Um, and we have to understand that. We have to understand that everybody has different uh, needs and wants and goals. And for me, I just want to be a part of that process for them, whether they intend to build a career in this industry or not. Uh, the reality is, is that there's a lot that they can take away from this industry and carry with them to, no matter, if, you know, what industry they, they, they land in. Yeah. And I think, I think your personal story, Jerry, is actually a feather in your cap for helping, you know, kids that come in to talk to you about work and they're like, man, I don't know if I want to do this. I don't know about this, but I think your personal story is a testament, you know, for, for those guys that may be looking for an opportunity and not sure it's a fit for. No, look, and, and I'll, I'll share this with you. For a long time, uh, I have an identical twin brother, as I mentioned. He's in hospitality. He runs a large hotel as well. And and uh, for a long time, we uh, while we're very proud of what we do, we never shared our story. And uh, throughout the pandemic, you know, we started a podcast, Hospitality Twins, and we were interviewing folks that had been furloughed. And uh, for two reasons, we wanted to allow them a platform to tell their story to uh, share uh, what they love about hospitality and also hopefully provide them an avenue to get back into hospitality, right? And uh, throughout that process, we also then came to the realization that we we have an obligation to tell our story uh, so that hopefully it can be a roadmap for current and future leaders or people who are just trying to figure out what to do and may find a passion and love for hospitality. So Ramon and I, we wrote our book. We wrote uh, the book Familia. And the book is about culture and leadership and hospitality. Uh, but throughout that book, we tell our story and our version of leadership. Nothing's ever perfect. We don't believe that our version is the only version, but hopefully it will be something that as somebody reads it, that they may find a window into it and be like, hmm, I, I didn't think that I could do this. But now after reading this book, I my goals were just lifted. And that's our hope and, and goal. And um, at the end of the day, you know, we now feel an obligation to share our story so that we can hopefully provide a roadmap to others and to, to how to get there. It's obviously hard work, dedication, and um, telling people what you intend to do and what you want and chasing it relentlessly. Uh, but uh, we, we are two individuals who were able to do it. So we hope it's an example to others uh, that they can do it as well. Man, that's awesome. Let me uh, pause for a second with you, Jerry, and, and uh, I have to give a shout out to our sponsors, or they won't sponsor us anymore, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the THM View is this episode is being sponsored by Recovery. If you've experienced a home fire, tornado, or other natural disaster, you know how easy it is to lose everything overnight. Well, Recovery is a new app. It allows you to record everything in your home, store it in the cloud for easy retrieval should disaster strike. Versus you trying to recall all of your household valuables, your jewelry, your heirlooms, all of that stuff. It allows you to settle your claim with your insurance company much faster. It takes a lot of stress off of you. And if you click on the promo code today, you get 50% off the Recovered app. And it will uh, obviously be a less of a headache for you to, ha to have if something should happen. And as always, we like to ask all of our viewers... Please, please, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like us here on LinkedIn. And this episode will be, will be broadcast on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And we always, always, always appreciate your feedback and comments on every episode. All right. So, so Jerry, tell me this. You know, you've got a great story. You're doing wonderful things there in New Orleans. I love it. I love it. I love it. What is the next phase we're, we're we're sponsoring via our podcast right now a series on students and hospitality right we're trying to find those juniors those seniors that are about to 
look at graduating and looking for opportunities in the hospitality space. And we're bringing them on our podcast and we're letting them talk about what they want to do, which sounds very similar to some of the stuff that you're doing there with your podcast. So I definitely want to make the connection somehow. I know we've got some students that are coming up and I'd love to somehow connect them with you so you can maybe give them some pointers Maybe you have jobs. I don't know, but I'd love to connect them with you at some point so they could talk with you about, hey, here's what to expect in hospitality, you know, starting out. You know, this is what you're going to get. You know, you might be in the road. You might be, you know, changing and, and, you know, dressing the room so the next guest can come in. But this is what it takes and this is what it's about. So I would love to make sure that I connect them with you. And when we do the podcast, I'm going to make sure that we uh, send you a link to it so you can see some of the prospective students that are coming out. I think I think as early as May, actually, uh, looking for opportunity. Look, I'd love I'd love to make that connection, and um, I welcome it. Uh, I love nothing more than to really hopefully um, impart something, you know, uh, some wisdom on those that are the, the the new talent coming into our industry. You know, I, I mentioned, um, you know, I work for Highgate Hotels. We have a, 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 a summer internship program uh, that's, you know, the jobs are posted now on, on our career page. And um, our hope and goal is to have uh, those hospitality professionals that are looking to come into the industry come and, and, and work with us and, and explore hospitality, learn and grow. And we've got over 500 hotels, you know, so we've got plenty of opportunity and plenty of um, of, 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 uh, of great leaders that can hopefully impart knowledge on, on uh, all those young hospitality professionals. You know, I have also the good fortune. I haven't, um, I, I took a, a break, but I also uh, am an adjunct professor at the University of New Orleans here at uh, uh, in the hospitality program. So just exactly what you're mentioning, I love engaging with the students um, and uh, hopefully being able to share with them, give them a window into the industry and use real life examples that can kind of align with the text and the assignments to to really hopefully have them leave, uh, graduate with um, some real real life experiences and knowledge. I've I've even hosted classes here, had the team come by and or the students come by and and tour the property and, and give them a window into the back of house and how things work. Um, and uh, so I, I would love to make that connection. Uh, it, it's near and dear to me in in terms of uh, what. Uh, I'd like to do and what I view my mission as today. Um, and, you know, as you mentioned earlier, I mean, I, I stay busy, but at the end of the day, you make time for those things that matter and, and you know, sharing that and, and hopefully uh, assisting those that are coming into our industry to, to start strong uh, is a big part, uh, I believe, in, in that mission. Uh, so I, I'd welcome that opportunity. I was going to say, I should have, I've got a young lady graduating from Cornell uh, hospitality school in May. I asked her to send me over her resume today, as a matter of fact. And then there's a gentleman that I met at the Hunters Conference last week who's at the uh, at the University of Pennsylvania who's graduating, I think, in Maine, who's also in the hospitality school. So I'll get I'll get both of those guys resume and send you over to it. But both of those guys will be on at least I know Jaden's already committed. I'm not sure about um, about Francis, but uh, he's already committed to coming on and talking about what he wants to do in the hospitality space. So, you know, sometimes they're really shy. You know, they're like, they're afraid that, I'm like, look, it, this is this is not the time to be shy. You know, we need, <laughs> yeah, we got to come on. Yeah, you got to come on and put it out there and say, hey, I'd love to be in this space. I'd love to be in this space. But, you know, so sometimes it's, it's uh I think they go through a little bit of a uh, shyness on it, but I keep trying to convince them that, Hey, you got 10, 15 minutes of fame right here. You can talk about what you want to do and the right person to see it, you know? Yes. Look, I, I think that it is, um, it, it, what's important today is what our clients are looking for. Right. And what we found is that there's been this huge push and movement and desire to understand from clients. What is the, what is the property? What are hotels doing? Uh, that we can align with uh, as we're investing in our time and effort in the properties. They want to know that we're partnering with them in a good way, that everything that they're doing, uh, their meeting is 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 done in a sustainable way. 
uh, Highgate Hotels, we partner with a company called Green, Green Key Global. And what they do is they, they provide an assessment, uh, a sustainability assessment that basically outlines everything that a property is doing from a sustainability uh, perspective and then provides us with a, a grade, so to speak, a certificate. And then we're able to provide that to the client and say, here's our certificate. These are the things that we're doing. So providing it in one clean format so that they, they're able to 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 best understand how we're going to partner with them from a sustainability perspective, because it, it's a partnership. Um, and we, we do all the small things, right? You know, the, the goal is to not have, you know, non-reusable plastics and reduce, um, you know, our burden in terms of waste. And um, that applies to everything from water to, you know, all of the amenities that we use. You, you, I'm sure you know, I mean, obviously everyone moved more to the, the larger bulk amenities to reduce the the waste and tossing of, of half filled bottles, uh, partnering with um, with with organizations like Clean the World uh, in terms of you know recycling uh, you know soaps and shampoos and such, uh, but also it goes beyond that. You know we're installing uh, at this property uh, you know water dispensers so that guests can refill their own bottles, right? And so looking at ways to reduce all of those plastics in addition to recycling. Um, you know, is 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 huge in our world. And I think that what we've had in the past is a, a difficulty in kind of compiling all that information into one one clean document, one clean presentable format. Uh, but Green Key Global for us in Highgate Hotels has been our partner in that and helping us uh, to, to put that into that clean format. But we're always constantly looking for uh, ways to do that. We're actually gold on finding new sustainability projects you know, this property here, we, we replaced every every bit of lighting with LED lighting, um, you know, and, and uh, every year we're looking for the newest projects. So our goal is to have at least one major project a year that's going to help us do that. We just replaced the chiller um, and went to a natural gas generator here, just looking at ways that we can um, uh, perform and and work and operate in a more sustainable manner. And that is awesome. And I'm going to I'm going to send you over some of the uh, info on our company when we're done, because we actually play in the, uh, the maintenance CapEx space. So we get into, you know, chiller replacement. We're looking at working with the energy management guys right now and how we can help companies and clients save, you know, save electricity and stuff like that with the automatic setback. So I'm definitely going to uh, send you some info. So you have that to refer back to. And, uh, man, I, I, I have uh, I have thoroughly enjoyed talking with you. Obviously, I could go on and on, but I know you're a busy <laughs> guy, so, <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go. But hey, I really want to thank you for your time today, Jerry. I appreciate all the input. I'm gonna I'm gonna definitely make a connection with the students so that you can uh, see if we can help those guys move into the next level, right? And uh, hopefully, we can uh, we can both give back something together, right? Yes, that's the goal. I'd love to. <laughs> but I appreciate your having me. I appreciate the time. And um, uh, I've enjoyed the conversation thoroughly as well. Yeah. Hey, thank you again. Hey, this has been another Ted's Hospitality Minute. As always, we like to ask and remind you guys, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like us here on LinkedIn. And this episode, Jerry will be on Spotify and Apple Podcasts shortly. And as always, we appreciate your feedback. You guys have a great week. We will see you next time. Take care. Ted's Hospitality Minute is sponsored by Recover It. Don't wait for disaster to happen to wish you had done this.